Hello, I'm Mal, and welcome to my Let's Play of Democracy 3 as the President of the United States. Alright, so, Democracy 3, I've, I've played uh, most of the countries um, in, the, in the base game at this point. I think the United States, and France, and maybe Britain. Yeah, those are the three I haven't done yet. Pretty sure that's it. <laughs> so now I'm, I'm going to try to tackle the United States. Uh, now, I have played this a few times uh, as the United States, and I've never been successful. So uh, maybe I can this time. I, I was very successful in my last Let's Play with Germany, so I'm kind of hoping that I can apply some of that to this. But every country's got a lot of different circumstances and different constituency bases, so what worked in Germany is probably not going to work here in the U.S. Just saying. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look. What do we have in the red? Holy moly, like everything? Okay, so homelessness is a problem. Uncompetitive economy. Pollution. Skill shortage, because our education's not good enough. We have drug addiction problems. We have an asthma epidemic. Alcohol abuse. Vigilante mobs. Antisocial behavior. And internet crime. Okay. Wow. All right, let's take a look at our uh, cabinet. Yeah, they're kind of so-so. 2.4 and a 2.9 at the start of our term. Sheesh. Socialist liberal, huh? Okay. Farmers conservatives. Okay. Hmm. All right, so let's take a look. What's our biggest base? It looks like Patriot is the largest constituency base. Yeah. The gray bars, just as a reminder, there's a, in, like, let's take a look at Patriot here. There's a white box, and then inside that white box, you, there's a bar, and that tells you, essentially, their affinity for you. So the Patriots are happy with me. Um, and then that gray shaded bar, which I'm not sure if that comes through or not, but there, it's about half of the box tells you the size of that constituency base. So this is pretty sizable. Okay, socialist. It's about the same. All right, so, right. So in the U.S., you essentially have two major parties, the Republicans and the Democrats. So for those of you not from the states, um, the Republicans would be the conservative party, uh, you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of strange, right? Um, small government is essentially what they're for, um, but they want to spend a ton of money on defense, and they want to tell people how they should live their lives. It's kind of odd. And then actually, on the other side, on the the Democrats um, or liberals, uh, it's sort of the same story. You know, they they uh, actually they do own the fact that they want larger government. Um, or they feel government can be an instrument of change, but at the same time, the Democrats, um, they, they too want to implement policies that uh, a, a large portion of the constituency base is not looking for. So it's a very polarized country right now. So I think that all of these problems here sort of reflect accurately things that are going on in the U.S., and it's very tough to get anything done. I think that's part of my problem when I've been playing this is that one of the things that this game seems to do pretty well is accurately show how hard it is to make change um, as the leader of a country without either failing to get reelected or, in my case, usually just getting assassinated. <laughs> okay, so what can we do? Uh, uh, hmm, what should we tackle first, I guess? What can everybody get behind? That's the big thing. Well, let's look at let's look at uh, some policy changes. Let's look at that first. Okay, I like the junk food tax deal combined with health food subsidies. Yeah, so you tax them some, and then you fund this. So let's let's do the junk food tax, and let's make that kind of high, actually. Like 60%. Or we could tax it at 90%. 
The youth will be pissed off, but eh, let's do it. Okay, and then we grab the health food subsidies. We implement that. Okay. There we go. So that's kind of budget neutral. We have a $1.71 billion surplus right now. That sounds like a lot, but it's really not. When, you, when you're playing the other countries in Democracy 3 and then you start playing the U.S., you start going and messing around with the sliders, like one little tick is like $3 billion. <laughs> It's kind of crazy. So let's see, and we have a ridiculous amount of debt. Hmm. All right, so we made that one little change to help with the health. Uh, can we afford... Yeah, see, I barely changed this, and wow. But we do need to start addressing this. Okay, let's let's do that. I think that's all we're gonna do for this first deal here. Um, I did the only uh, thing I changed, by the way, when I set this up is that I changed uh, term limits to three. So, U.S. presidents uh, are voted in for four years with a maximum of two terms. Um, I changed it to where I can have uh, three terms. I'm being optimistic here, people. <laughs> All right, let's see. Debt protection law. Yeah, we're going to limit their activity. Yes, I'm doing it. Uh, only 20% intend to vote for me. All right. Nice. Okay, we have a, a bigger budget surplus. Okay, I'm not sure why, but I'm not going to argue with that. Let's take a look here. What's... Okay, income tax, sales tax, corporate tax. Right, right, right. Capital gains. Oh, capital gains? I'm not a... F I'm not a fan of, of, of this, really. The problem with capital tax is that it's like in this case, right? It's 17%. The problem with capital tax is that the way you structure reimbursement um, or not reimbursement, um, the way you schedule a, um, a payment package for someone that's, you know, uh, you know, a, a top end executive or what have you it tends to be heavy on uh, things like stock and, um, you know, other sort of outside the normal salary. So they end up paying percentage wise less tax uh, because of the way capital gains works. I don't know. I kind of go back and forth on that one. Of what I, you know, how I feel about capital gains. Inheritance tax, I'm not big on. Um, simply because that's. There's already been tax paid on this, probably more than once. Um, the the interesting thing about this, though, is that this doesn't affect the majority of people like in the States here. It doesn't affect them, but people get so riled up about this because they think maybe someday it might affect them. So. So let's see. Yeah, see, like middle, like, for instance, uh, yeah, conservatives and social. Oh, man. Why? I don't know why people even care about this. It doesn't affect them. Don't make enough for it to matter. Corporate tax. Hmm. We want to lower corporate tax. I don't. I don't think so right now. In fact, I don't think we're gonna mess with taxes at all. If we really do have this surplus, though, we should make some investments in education. Let's start with, where's it at? Science, actually, let's start with science funding. Let's increase that some. Can't go crazy yet, but let's increase it. Okay, and then... Okay, let's increase education. 
And then we probably ought to do something about the crime, right? No, the regular police, not the SWAT or whatever. Where's it at? There we go. Oh, I, that's right. I raised it a little bit already. Uh, okay, let's leave that alone then for now. Uh, where's the intelligence services? No, that's prisoner tagging. I don't want that. That's regular police force. Yeah, yeah. Is this it? Yeah, intelligence services. Okay. Hmm. All right, now let's go ahead and go to the next quarter. Children's food. This law has been proposed to regulate the fat content and nutritional value of food sold to children. I already have this going on. All right, well, we'll regulate it. I mean, we already kind of are, but okay. 25%. I'd get 25% of the vote. Okay, good. We still have some surplus. Hmm. Okay, how's this problem going? Doesn't seem to be going down much. Of course, it's only been a quarter, so... Private school investment? Hmm. I want to increase school vouchers. Yeah, this is a toughie. So, um, for those of you not as familiar with the, the states, so we have both uh, private schools for, um, you know, beginning education and secondary schools, as well as universities. And at least in the, you know, K through 12 developmental years, the vast majority of people go to state schools. And it's, it's kind of convoluted because you have the Department of Education, which is a federal agency, uh, dictating to the states um, a lot of policies and, and curriculum and whatnot. Um, and then the states themselves are funding the majority of their own schools, typically through property taxes. So a more affluent neighborhood or school district typically has better schools. So it's, uh, it's not the best... Uh, it's not the best setup, I, I, I'd have to say. So school vouchers, the concept behind school vouchers is that you give people a credit um, and then the parent can apply that towards a private school. This also uh, means that they could go to a parochial school, like if they wanted to go to um, a school with, you know, some type of religious learning involved, which is not allowed in, in regular state schools. The, the problem with school vouchers, however, or the, the counter argument to this is that that takes money out of a system that's already struggling. So I'm not going to mess with this right now, um, but if, you know, it's it's sort of like the whole concept if you're, you know, if you're paying the taxes, be it in property or whatever, you should have some say in what's going on with your kid's education. Now, people would say, okay, that's fine, Mel, but then vote for your, you know, local school board and influence things that way, not via trying to take money out of the system uh, using vouchers. Eh, I hear you. And then I, I guess the other part is that a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, but, but people that can do so will send their kids to private schools, even if there are no vouchers. And then it's sort of like they're kind of getting screwed because they, it's not like they get to opt out of property tax, right? They're still paying that. And then they're paying for their kids' private education. So, yeah, it's kind of a tough one. <laughs> That's my I'll wrap it up with that. It's kind of a tough one to figure out. Uh, education. What about technology schools? Should we raise that? Yeah. 
How much would that cost us to go all the way up? Two bill? All right, let's do it. Let's look for some other policies that we can implement. Clean energy subsidies? Yeah, I like clean energy subsidies. Not to the tune of 10 million or 10 billion, but we can start it off. And then there's another one. Hold on. Where is it at? Microgeneration grants. Yeah, we can't like fund this too heavily right now, but we can do it a little bit. All right, let's go to the next one. Grimes down, health's on the rise. Superhero, all right. Budget still rated at BB, okay. Global economy is doing well. Okay, that's... Oh, deficit, huh? I thought we had a surplus going. Spending too much money, I guess. I could implement a tax of some kind. Bring in some money. Alcohol tax. That's always popular, right? <laughs> Actually, every time I've done this, people have gotten majorly mad at me. Both the little digital guys in the game and gals in the game here, and then also subscribers are like, Why did you do that? Well, you know what? I'm doing it. Alcohol tax coming your way. Uh, 50, 52 billion? What? Okay, that's kind of crazy. Let's, uh... What if we did, like, 15 per 20%? What if we did 20% tax on that? 28 billion a quarter? Yeah. Religious symbols in school. Uh, nothing short of discrimination against Muslims. Nobody expects this law to be used to prevent the wearing of Christian crosses. Ban Muslim students from dressing as they wish. Oh, okay. This would include wearing... Oh, female Muslim students wearing... Okay. Yeah, we're going to reject the ban. Poverty's on the rise, unfortunately. Loyal, passable on our cabinet. Let's take a look at them a little closer, shall we? Nah, all of them except for this lady. Maybe she's not too happy with us because of the policies we're implementing. I get it. I get it that you're not happy. Was there something I could do to make you happy? Probably not. Yeah! There we go. What's up, legal aid? There we go. That'll make her a little happier. What else? Prisons. Surprisingly, this is something everyone can get behind. Some re-education. Extensive rehabil rehabilitation. Yeah, let's do it. Now, any other policies? Mmm. Where's that youth? Youth, yeah, there we go. Youth centers. University grants. Public libraries. Nobody goes to the library anymore. I don't know what that's about. Library's cool, man. Let's see. Community policing? Mm. Telecommuting initiative. Yes. I like this one. Six billion, huh? Okay, we'll just start off at this then. All right, next. Ban same... Okay. Not gonna ban same-sex marriage. 
It's not the business of government to dictate that. It's not. I don't care what side of the whole moral thing you get on. It, it's irrelevant. Government has no business being involved in that decision. They don't. Do, do, do. Do. Polls don't look at Well, 36%. That's an improvement over what I had. Okay, let's see. So health... Is there anything I can do about this? Drug addiction. What can I do with this? Narcotics. Yeah, they're outlawed. What if I legalized cannabis? So that wouldn't affect... Hmm. It would piss off parents. Crime would go up. Huh? Or, no. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure. Sometimes these red-green bar things, man, get a little confusing for me. So, if I went like that, liberals would be happy, and conservatives would not be happy, and crime would ultimately be reduced. Okay, I see what it's saying. So I could, legal I could legalize cannabis and then tax the crap out of it. Yeah. Should we try that? I don't know. That's kind of a big deal. I tell you what. You guys tell me what you think. I'm going to end this one here. Let me know if you think I should legalize uh, marijuana and then turn around and tax the hell out of it. And see if you think that's a good idea or not. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of my attempt at leading the United States to a better and more prosperous future. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to your comments and feedback as always. Until next time, I'm Mal, and I will see you later.